Okay, today let's talk about floaters, the random stuff that floats around our home that doesn't have an assigned spot. And so it it bugs us because we, we end up shuffling it from one spot to another thinking, oh, I'll put it there, only to go to declutter that spot and be like, I still don't know what to do with this. So you always have two clear options with this stuff that floats around our house. We'll talk about what those two things are coming up next. and I lost my voice on the all day declutter. <laughs> so bear with me, but I wanted to talk about this idea because this also came up on the all day declutter of what do we do with this random stuff that floats around our house. And so it can come in the form of a hook that came out on the wall that didn't get put back up, uh, the, the pool testing strips, but also things like magazines and coupons and returns. Most of us have more returns than ever. So we're gonna talk about what to do with these types of things today. Okay, so like I said, there's always two clear options. You can get rid of it, and we'll talk about that, or find a permanent home for it. So first, let's talk about get, getting just getting rid of it. So I was going to straighten up our hall closet, which collects the most random things, <laughs> always, and I came across this hook. It used to be uh, in the wall on the other end of the closet, and the kids could put their backpacks on it, their school backpacks. But as you can see, the anchor came out. It wasn't in a stud, apparently, obviously, and it's no longer hanging on the wall. The problem is, is we don't actually really need it anymore. We have enough hooks in our closet. And so this has just been floating around. It was on the bottom of the closet for a while, then it was on the top shelf, then it was on the side shelf. And so it's just randomly been getting moved from spot to spot. And so again, what I wanna do anytime I notice something that's just really random floating around the house is ask myself, do I wanna either get rid of it or find a permanent home for it? So most of us will not first jump to get rid of it, right? Because I look at this as something that is perfectly good that I spent money on. So why would I get rid of it? And this is where often we need permission for you to, to say, did you know that you can actually get rid of perfectly good items? If it is no longer serving you and you can't think of an instance where you are for sure gonna use it in the next six months or so, that it is actually totally okay to get rid of these types of things. I know, we're not taught that growing up, <laughs> right? You keep everything. If it still has a, a purpose, it's not broken or damaged, you keep it. Well, sometimes even if it is broken or damaged, right? You keep it until you find another use for it, right? And that's most of us, that's how we've mentally been trained with this kind of stuff. And so that's why it continues to float from the floor to the upper shelf to the other shelves, right? Because in my brain, I did not even give myself the option of parting with it. It was only use it, figure out another way to use it. But I had totally forgotten about this. And if, if the things that are floating around, if you have also completely forgotten about them, then it had no value to me because even if I thought, wow, I could really use another hook in some place in the house, I would not have thought to look on the floor and then the upper shelf and then these shelves for it, right? It, in my brain, it no longer existed until I just came across it again when I was straightening up this closet. So it has no value to me whether it continues to float around this closet or heads to the donation center where at least someone could potentially use it, right? So we have to start allowing our brains to understand that parting with stuff, donating it or tossing it is an acceptable solution because I've had to handle this multiple times now. So this requires my energy and bandwidth to manage. And I don't think it's actually worth it, <laughs> right? If I'm trying to get my house simplified and easy to manage, these types of random things that float around just aren't worth it. So I'm gonna part with this, I'm gonna donate it and never ever have to handle it again. On the other hand, there are some things that we need. So these are like uh, the pool testing strips for our pool. We got the saltwater chlorinator, which was super cool and worked really well. Um, and these are the test strips. Because they are still in the brand new package, you can see that Tom didn't necessarily use them this past summer. No offense to Tom, he's sitting right there. But the, the hope is next summer, uh, we're gonna monitor the salt letter level just a little bit better and so that we are gonna use these. So I do wanna do option number two and I wanna assign it a permanent home. However, I don't really have a spot for pool testing strips. And so I, I know I have to put them somewhere where I'm not gonna forget about them, right? That's always the problem is then where would I put it that when we set up the pool, I'm not gonna forget about it. And this is where it's actually okay to make 
a random or miscellaneous items bin. For some of us that becomes our junk drawer, but it is actually okay just to have some kind of bin or basket where you put stuff that doesn't have a home. And that becomes a place where you would go to look for this type of thing. And so, it, like I said, it can be a drawer, a bin, or a basket. And I know for a lot of us, the problem is those drawers become overrun with stuff, right? So we have to look at it. If we are gonna create this, um, we have to look at it like this container is a limit and I can only keep as much as fits in there. And that means occasionally we are gonna have to go through it. So we look at it as a solution, but it's not a solution that doesn't ever require any maintenance. Yeah, I'm still gonna have to go through it once in a while. That's the cost of keeping stuff. I still have to manage it, and I will have to make sure that the inventory doesn't overrun the container, but it is perfectly acceptable to have a drawer or a basket like that. So many times, all the time, people ask like, what do I do with the random stuff? It is okay to have like a random or a miscellaneous things basket and that is totally fine. But again, we just don't want the contents to spill over or out of it because that's when it feels messy or out of control and then it's not really serving the purpose anymore and then it's actually hard to find the stuff in there <laughs> that we need. So it's not maintenance free. We still have to maintain it, but at least now this isn't just like floating on the shelf in here. Okay, so next let's talk about um, like catalogs, coupons, the, the random paper stuff, and then we'll talk about returns. So inevitably in the past, we always had this stack on our kitchen island that just had such random stuff in it. It was, like I said, coupons, um, catalogs I thought maybe I would order from, magazines that I wanted to clip recipes out of, and it floated in different areas around the house. Some of it was in the kitchen, some was like in the living room, but it was always these just like little stacks of paper clutter all around, right? Because I didn't know if it was safe to get rid of that stuff. I thought, well, I might order from that or I might use that coupon. And so we have talked about having a time will tell basket. And this is part then of my paper clutter system. But basically what goes in here, it's not any to do items, it's things that I might want to actually use, but I don't know for sure. So coupons, catalogs, uh, I've put paint samples in here if I wasn't sure. You know, you go and you like collect a bunch, but then you're like, are we gonna use them or not? Where do those live, right? Until you're, you decide. This is the perfect spot for that. Um, a calendar, I wasn't sure if we would use or not. Some information for a house service that we not sure if we're gonna use or not. Something in the mail maybe that you could do something with, but it's not a to-do. So the nice thing about your time will tell basket is that if all of this stuff disappeared, it wouldn't matter. There's no bad consequences because again, you don't have to do anything with it. It's just there if you would want to revisit it again, then you know that it's here and where to find it. So you can gather up all of that random paper around the house and put it in here, assign it a home. You can keep it out of sight again, cause it doesn't matter if we forget about it. Like it does not have to be in sight. This stuff can get forgotten about it. And then we still keep our like to-dos or our action stuff separate from that. So we talk about paper clutter in other videos, but this has been a game changer as far as the random paper things that float around our house. So this has been really helpful. All right, and now let's talk about returns. This is something that we definitely manage a lot more of now. I don't know, I guess our mailman says he delivers a lot of Amazon packages here, but I can't imagine we order much more than anyone else. I think it's just because we have a really long driveway, so it especially draws attention to it. But I think it's really important to have some kind of bin or basket where we put returns, where we keep them all together. Now, again, this isn't maintenance free. We still have to maintain it. Like we still have to follow through with doing it, but having them all consolidated in one place, I found that I don't miss as many returns as I did in the past. But one thing I'm noticing, so I used to have this bin up on the top shelf in our closet and it's a, it's a little bit too out of sight. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually gonna swap it with this basket of extra shoes and I'm gonna move that up and I'm gonna have our return bin here um, because I feel like I will see it more than up there because I still have to work to remember it up there but I feel like if it's in a more visual spot then I will remember it better even more. <laughs> and so I do think it's important that it's somewhere visual, but I know others have said that you gotta be careful where you put it because it can get other stuff piled on top of it. So I feel like this will be a good height. This is where the kids keep like their hats and mittens. I think it'll be up just high enough. But what I like about like having a separate bin like that too is that 
I can take it to the kitchen table and print out the labels or get the QR codes or whatever it is that I need to do with it. And then from there, I can even take the whole basket and just put it on my the front seat of my car if I need to, if there's a bunch or just take out what is in there. But no matter where we put this, I think it's very important that we find a home for this if it's something that we're having a lot of, like we are <laughs> more recently. And so again, going back to this idea that anytime we have something that's floating around our house that continues to kind of like wreak havoc on our homekeeping systems is just to stop and look at it and ask ourselves, can I get rid of it? Can I give myself permission to let go of this item, even if it's still perfectly good, even if I spent money on it, just because I don't wanna to continue to defer the decision and have to handle it over and over again, especially if we have forgotten about it, just giving ourselves permission to let that go. Or number two, can I assign a permanent home? Now, again, it might be in something as simple as a miscellaneous items bin or drawer, or something more specific, like having a basket in an easy to see spot for returns. But again, just thinking through this process anytime we're having these things floating around our house, because I know how it goes, I know how frustrating they are, especially when you're really making progress on the rest of your house decluttering it, but you feel like you still can't keep it super tidy because of this stuff floating around. So I completely understand that. And that's where if we can just ask these two questions and decide which one we wanna do, that at least then we feel like we have a game plan and we can find some solutions and think through what the best solutions would be. All right, well, I hope this helps a little bit. I would love to know what random things float around your house and which would you do? Would you just get rid of it or do you need to find a permanent home or a way to contain it? That really does make a huge difference and don't forget to put a label on it too. Our brains love labels. It just, it assigns it a home. It makes it more permanent. Everybody knows what goes in here. So putting a label on it is very helpful as well. All right, I love you. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.